Hey everybody, it's Never, and I'm here in the Lion's Arch Aerodome, which is just here at the bottom of Lion's Arch. There's a portal right here you can walk into. It's also the raid lobby. You can get this waypoint and come to it any time. And I'm going to show you how to test your own DPS if you don't want to or can't install something like Arc DPS over here. So all you got to do is come over here and come into this corner to the Special Forces Training Area, and you try and go in, but oh no, it's locked out. You got to be in a squad. So you just click over here, create squad, and boom, here we go. We can just come right in here. And there's a couple of things you can do in here that I want to demonstrate to you and show you, but it's really quite simple. Uh, there's not a whole lot to it. We've got two consoles. There's a golem spawning console over here, and there's an arena console. The arena console is what you can use to give yourself every buff in the game, every class bonus in the game. And that's somewhat unrealistic things. If you're looking to just see what the absolute ceiling of your build is, then that's the way to do it. Otherwise, we're going to come over here and um, we'll just... I've got settings, but I'm going to clear them. You go to spawn a golem, and then you're just going to say, how big do you want it? Big ones can give you more DPS because a lot of your abilities are going to hit multiple times on the same target if its hitbox is large enough. I tend to go with small ones just because that gives me the most realistic and generous idea of what I'm going to do on my own, on average, running out in the open world. I tend to go with a million health just because I'm impatient for results, and that's it. You can go to additional options if you want and add a break bar, or uh, you can make it move around or give it buffs or whatever, but that's about, I don't really mess with those that much. And so then we just spawn the golem and that's it. So it's got a million health and every 20% it's going to give us a report of what the damage is. And this is how we find out what our DPS is. So I'm just gonna go in here and do that and see what my open world Hollow Schmidt build can do for DPS if I'm just standing still and pushing the buttons. It's really straightforward. I'm gonna time that kind of badly. But as soon as he drops down to 80% health, we're going to get an idea of first DPS report. That's 9,000, over 9,000. So it's definitely a meme amount of DPS, which is really good. And we're going to keep on going through here and use up the last of this before it's time for the next Hollow Forge. And let's get going with it. And 60% is the next crossover. And that'll tell us a good idea is to go through the entire thing so that you can get a good sense of where your... Oh, I canceled that too quickly. You can get a good sense of where your burst versus your sustained DPS is because uh, a lot of times burst is going to be at the beginning of your DPS cycle and sustain is going to be at the end uh, or uh, throughout it. And so you want to... Uh, see it through all the way until you've killed the whole golem so that you get a good idea of what your DPS is in both situations, sustained and burst. But this thing is almost dead. It is admittedly kind of difficult to do this well and right while trying to talk about it because I'm used to World of Warcraft rotations which are kind of brain dead compared to some of the stuff that you've got to do for Guild Wars 2. But that is a dead golem. And so, yeah, over 9,000 all the way down to about 8,500. And I find that 8,500 is a pretty good average for what I get if I'm just goofing around with this. And then you can come over to this part. Shut up. And you can adjust yourself and you can just add every boon and then and you can add just certain ones and you can add every profession mechanic and you can see how stupid can this get how dumb can this possibly be respawn my previous golem that has the same settings and then we'll find out how dumb can this get if i've got every buff from everything permanent quickness permanent alacrity stuff lines up a lot differently it's uh i've got to time it a lot more aggressively but yeah there we go 16,000 DPS it's pretty wild 
And let's say that, okay, I found out, yeah, 16,000 DPS or whatever, or 17,000, I'm done. I don't want to see this anymore. I want to try something else. I want to switch my traits or test another part of my build. You can just remove the golem. You'll drop combat and you can spawn another one. If you have turrets or a pet, make sure you call them off before you despawn it or before you call another one. And that's it. That's straight up what you can do. So you can go through here and find out. Uh, I could just go over here, over here and auto attack this thing and see how much DPS am I going to get? I mean, I still have all these buffs, so it's going to be ridiculous. But how much DPS do I get just from standing here and auto attacking? What if I only use one ability with it? What if I change a trait? You can use this to find out all of those things in a, in a really scientific manner and figure out if one trait is more valuable than another. And then once you get that sorted out and you can see what you can do with a golem that's standing still, why don't you adjust a golem that moves around? Because now it can move. And so let me turn these things off. Okay. So this guy is running. Quite a bit more difficult. And so I can try to chase him and do what DPS I can. And it's going to be a very different story. If I drop my hard light arena, I can't stand in it. So that's going to be a DPS loss. And so it's important to think about these things if you're planning on figuring out if your build is good for real world applications. Because being able to stand there like you can on a raid boss in a lot of situations is one thing. But having to chase the, the thing, especially if it's this fast, gives you a a pretty humbling and realistic idea that I did just about 5,000 DPS that time because I had to chase it. And so it's something to keep in mind. Anyway, that's how you do the DPS testing in the Special Forces area. I hope this is helpful to you. If you have any questions about it or want to know more about something else, please leave a comment below. Okay, thanks. Bye.